aren't you glad you're a Christian? <laughs> That's so funny. I said, aren't you glad you're saved? Aren't you glad you're a Christian? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know, and that is really strange because, you know, down here, we, we can't really uh, comprehend what that means to be saved. We can't comprehend what that means to be a Christian. But boy, when we get on the other side, we'll, we'll comprehend it. Wouldn't it. You know, wouldn't it be great if we could all go to heaven for 10 minutes? Well, we wouldn't have time tonight because... But wouldn't it be great if we could go to heaven for 10 minutes and come back and I'd like to ask that same question. Isn't it great to be saved? Boy, woo! Boy, I tell you what, we'd take the, the roof off, wouldn't we? But that, that's just the way we are. That's just the way we are because of the flesh, because we're tired, because we're sleepy because we don't comprehend, because we don't understand the blessings that are ours in Christ Jesus. We just don't get as excited as we should. In our soul winning class, there's a little part. It's called the church testimony. And it starts out, we live in very uncertain times. And most people are looking for something certain. Now, did I do that right? Is it most people are looking for something certain? Okay. No, I know it isn't right either. It's just people are looking for something certain. And you know that's true, and we have nothing certain here, do we? There's nothing certain. Things are in constant change. That's one thing that you can't, that is certain, I guess, is that there's going to be change. I remember when I first started pastoring this church, we had a quite a large group of senior citizen ladies that sat right over there. Quite a large group. That's all changed. They're gone. Things constantly change. Our feelings change. Our emotions change. Our financial status changes. Things are constantly changing. I remember hearing something John MacArthur said when he was going to marry his wife just before they got married. She said, Honey, will you love me forever? He said, I don't know. He said, I love you today. He said, but I'm not going to promise you that I'll love you till death do us part because I don't know that. Because things do change. We see so many people get married and oh, they're so in love and it's forever and all that kind of stuff. A year later, they're in divorce court. It's, we're in constant change. But people are looking for something certain. Something they can anchor to. Something you can count on. Yes, it's on. Is it on? Yes, it is. She just couldn't hear it. Her hearing's changed. (laughs) Used to, she could hear me from way back there. Now she can't hear me from the second row. But I still love her. Unless you go blind, too, then I won't. No, no, (laughs) I just don't (laughs) know. But things do change. Things are in constant change. And that's the reason people do need God in their life is because God doesn't change. Aren't you glad he doesn't change, Brother Wayne? Aren't you glad he isn't as fickle as we are? I'm thrilled to death for that that very fact. You know what? I tell you what, I just, I, I, they're laughing at me. See, now I did like them girls till they started laughing. Now I've changed. <laughs> and that's so true. It's just like your kids. You just love them to pieces. But if they do something really stupid, especially if it affects you, well, momentarily anyway, you don't really love them. You know? In fact, you're just really kind of put out with them and it's kind of like, well, leave then. You know? Kick them out then. That's the way you feel momentarily anyway. Well, we just change. Our emotions, our feelings, our constant changes by, by, by things on the outside so many times that influence us. We're not stable at all. And I'm here to tell you I'm so thrilled that I don't have to save and keep myself because I am constantly changing. You can have the best friend in the world and you just love them like a dear brother, but if they cross you, boy, hey, woo, it's history. Isn't that true? We change. But look what King David said here. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, 
because his mercy endureth forever. Now you think about it. Does your mercy endure forever? No. It all depends on what that person does to you, isn't it? Now you may have a lot of patience. And ladies, you may put up with your husband and put up with your husband and put up with your husband or vice versa. But your mercy doesn't endure forever. You finally say, that's it. I've had it. Adios. You're out of here. But God's mercy endureth forever. And I am so thankful that it does because of what we are. We're always like this. Isn't that right? How many times have, boy, you just been so in love with Jesus, and I mean you just jump up and give a testimony, and man, you sing the songs, and it just really thrills you, and maybe the very next week, you're so far down, you don't even want to go to church. You don't want to pray. You don't want to. See, we, we're just like this all the time, but his mercy is still there. That's the reason he's called the rock of our salvation. God never, never gets tired of, of forgiving you and remitting your sins. He never does. Aren't you glad for that? Boy, I certainly am. You know, if it was me, Brother Wayne, you goof up and I'll forgive you. You goof up again and I'll forgive you. Like Peter says, how many times I got to forgive him? Seven times? Like it's been twice and I'm already getting kind of tired of it, you know? But I might extend it to seven times. Jesus said seven times 70. In other words, just keep on forgiving. Keep on forgiving. And that's the way God does. His mercy endureth forever. I don't care how many times we fail him. He's always willing to take us back. He is always more anxious to take us back than we're anxious to come back. And I can prove that. Because there's no way that you would ever come back if he didn't send the Holy Spirit to deal with you. Did you know that? You can get so far down, but he will send circumstances. He will send trials. He will do whatever he needs to do to bring you back to that point to where you ask him to forgive you so that he can cleanse those sins. The Lord is good. His mercy endureth forever. He says, now let Israel say that the, his mercy endureth forever. Now, he's talking here about the whole nation of Israel. And keep in mind, only a remnant of Israel was saved. It's just like we've got churches all over this land, and there's churches on practically every corner, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of church members, but really there's only a remnant of those people that are really saved. So we have the great nation of Israel, but even though they're not all saved and only a small percentage are truly what you call saints, he says the whole nation has occasion to say his mercy endureth forever. Why? Because of past experiences. Was God merciful when he brought them out of Egypt? Yes, he was. When they got across to Egypt, was he merciful when he sent manna and fed them? Yes, he was. When they murmured against him, was he merciful when he had Moses strike the rock and give them water? Yes, he was. Now, when they rebelled and didn't go into the promised land, you remember they sent the spies and only two said, we can, ha we can take the land. The other ten said no. Was he merciful when he at least took their children in? Yes, he was. Was he merciful when they disobeyed everything he told them about idolatry? They got in the promised land. They set up their idols. They did everything wrong, and he still dealt with them and forgave them. Was that merciful? Yes, it was. And even in his mercy, he would chastise them. They would go into bondage or whatever, but guess what? He would always bring them back. As soon as they would repent, he would bring them back. Then what would they do? Well, boy, they'd straighten up their act, wouldn't they? No, they'd turn right around and do it again. And he would plead with them. He said the prophets to plead and plead and plead. And as a last resort, they'd go into bondage again. 
They finally straightened up and said, God, we have sinned. He'd bring them back home. He did that over and over again. Is he still merciful to Israel today, even though they reject him as a nation? In what way is he merciful? I can think of one particular way. He gave the church something to do concerning Israel. Do you, anybody know what that is? Pray for Israel. The church is to daily pray for Israel. Are they saved? No. But he says, pray for Israel. Is it his God's mercy? Is it God's mercy, even though the whole nation today has rejected him? Is it simply his unlimitless and eternal mercy that's one day going to save the whole nation and bring them back to himself? Yes. He says, let Israel say, his mercy endureth forever. He, now look at this. Let the house of Aaron say now, now say that his mercy endureth forever. Now, what do you know about the house of Aaron? What's he referring to when he says the house of Aaron? The priests, the ones that every day offer the morning sacrifice and the evening sacrifice. Who better would know by those sacrifices daily that his mercy endureth forever. Now you think about this. A man would enter the priesthood, I forget what age, seemed like around probably early 20s, but he couldn't actually offer sacrifices till he was near 30, if I, if I remember correctly. Now you take a man 30 years old until say he's 80, 70, 80, 40, 50 years, every day, twice a year, in the morning and in the evening, he would offer those sacrifices and they would have shifts. How many knew that? Nobody knew that but me. Yeah, well, I don't want to puff up or anything. I think some of you knew it and you're just kind of shy because you think it's a trap. And I don't know why you would. Have I ever trapped anybody here? <laughs> well, how many remember John the Baptist? Anybody remember John the Baptist? Anybody remember his daddy? Do you remember he worked on shifts as a priest? Yes, that's right. I don't know what he said, but I'm sure it had a lot to do with probably answering my question. But think about this. See, every time they offered that lamb in the morning, it was a reminder that God's mercy endures another day. Why? Because God could have killed them, but he accepted the lamb. Isn't that right? And then every evening they would offer the sacrifice, which was a reminder that God's mercy endures to the evening. The next day he would do the same thing over and over and over for the, his lifetime, and then he could look backwards and see where his daddy and his daddy, and his daddy's daddy, and his daddy's daddy's daddy, and you could go back to, to Aaron, that God's mercy was on display every morning and evening, morning and evening. So he says, let the priest say, his mercy endureth forever. Now, verse 4. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. Who's he talking to about there? The saints. Let the whole nation recognize and acknowledge that his mercy endureth forever. Let the priesthood acknowledge the fact his mercy endureth forever. And if anybody knows about his mercy, we should know. Isn't that right? How many times have you goofed up? How many times have you just laid out a church and didn't have any good reason for it whatsoever? Did he still bless you? Did he take you back? When you came to church, did he make you feel really, really bad because you wasn't there the Sunday before? No. His mercy endureth forever. You know, and I think that will be long enough, don't you? His mercy endureth forever. <clears throat> I heard a story one time about a man that got saved and he'd been an alcoholic and he, he would really battle the problem. He, you know, he was really trying to do right and, and every once in a while he'd 
it slip and he'd tie one on, as the old saying goes. Now, I don't speak from experience, but I've heard that phrase. And he'd get down on his knees and say, oh, Lord, forgive me. And he'd go three or four months, do real good, and, you know, really, you know, and then he'd do it again. He'd get on his knees and say, oh, Lord, forgive me. And he'd done that three or four times, and finally one time he fell on his knees and said, oh, Lord, I've done it again. And the Lord said, done what again? Now think about it. Why would the Lord say, done what again? Does anybody have a, have a reason? Because when he forgives you, he forgets it. Now, if I did something like that, my wife would not forget it. She might forgive me. No, I doubt it. I dare doubt it. Uh, but, but now she does, and, and she is, is, I'm saying this to keep from being killed. She's probably the best wife in here. Very merciful. But you know what? She can remember, she can remember for three months how many times I forgot to take the trash out. I did it again. Huh? Because it's about every time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Uh, let me give another illustration. Now, but Friday, I got up Friday. She said, well, this is trash day. And I said, okay. I said, uh, she said, there's the trash. It needs to go out. I said, okay. And I had every intention to take the trash out. I did. I had every intention. I said, first, I'm going to take my vitamins. So I went and took my vitamins, went right out, and started to get in the car, but I remembered the trash. Ah, oh, I'm getting better. So I rolled the trash container to the curb and I got down and I thought, that's awful light. And I looked at it, there wasn't nothing in it. So I rolled it back, but at least I tried, right? It didn't work, guys. It didn't work because what she meant was take the trash out of the house, put it in the dumpster. And I knew what she meant, but, you know, you try to kind of con, get out of it. You know? Well, honey, I started taking it down to the curb, but, she, but you didn't empty the trash, you know. But she will remember those things from week to week. But guys, how would you like to be married to a woman that you say, honey, I'm sorry. I, I, you're right, I didn't take the trash out. I'm really sorry. And then she forgot it. You could do that every week, couldn't you? See, because she can't forget. But see, we're not like that. She's not like that. You're not like that. We remember. But God does it. When he forgives, he forgets. He said, I remove it as far as the east is from the west, and I blot it out as with a thick cloud, and I will remember no more against you. Do you know what? If that was, if that was not a, a fact, I don't think I could start over every morning. I, I just don't really believe I could. And you stop and think about it. And if you'll be honest, I don't know whether you could. Because I fail him so many times every day but when I ask him to forgive me I know that the slate is wiped clean and he doesn't even remember you see if I got up in the morning knowing that he forgave me for yesterday's sins but didn't forgive him forget him I'd have a real hard time with that wouldn't you I'd have a real tough time with that well, Lord, I know you forgave me, but, oh, man, I did it again, and then I did it again, then I did it again, and then I did it again and again and again and again for years, and I know you remember every time I did it even though you forgave me. I don't think I could live with that. Of course, maybe you could. Maybe you don't goof up as much as I do or near as bad. But it's comforting to know that when the close of the day, I say, God, forgive me for my sins and where I failed you. It's so comforting to know that when I get out of bed the next morning, it's a brand new day, a brand new slate. God holds nothing against me because he don't remember anything to hold against me. Isn't, isn't that good? His mercy endureth forever. Let the whole world say that. Now look, verse 1. 
Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good because his mercy endureth forever. That goes out to the whole world and every generation, by the way. Then he gets specific. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the priests, the preachers, the priests, the ministers say his mercy endureth forever. And then let the redeemed say his mercy endureth forever. Now, now I want to close with this, though. Now, because his mercy endureth forever, because he is more than willing to forgive you, because he does wipe the slate clean, uh, clean, the slate clean. See, now you guys are holding that against me. Somebody be telling me about it next week and the week after. God don't do that. No, 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 no. I'm so glad that you're not God. And I don't think God laughs when I goop up. Huh? He might. <laughs> But don't use that fact as a license to sin. And I want to tell you something else. If you're really saved, you will not use that as a license to sin. You will not say, well, it doesn't matter what I'll do today. Tonight, I'll just ask you to forgive me. It's taken care of. No, no. Because when you're really saved, you don't want to hurt him. You don't want to. But it isn't comforting to know that if you do sin, he forgives you not only today, not only tomorrow, not only in the year 2000, not only in the year 3000, 4000, 10,000, whatever, but his mercy endureth forever. Isn't that great? That's great. I think we are saying amazing something. Don't you? Amazing mercy. That'd be a good one, but... There's, we don't have that one, but there's one real close, Shannon. Let's stand.